The last light to discuss is a volume light. Now we haven't discussed volume lights yet because they are a bit esoteric so I wanted to save them for their own video. So let's create a light and we'll talk about how it works. I'm going to go to Create, Light, Volume Light. The volume light comes in with a spherical icon. And the way it works is an object has to be inside the volume shape to be illuminated. Now the volume shape is a certain size by default but you can scale it up to make it larger to encompass new objects. So I'm going to scale that up. And then I'm going to create a primitive so we can see how that works. So I'm going to create a cylinder. And there it is. Now I have Smooth Shade All on, and also I have Use All Lights on. Even though I have Use All Lights on, it's black. And that's because the volume light has a very particular way in which it lets light flow through its shape. In fact, I need to go ahead and look at the attributes. So I'm going to select the light and go to the Attribute Editor. Now one important attribute for the light is Volume Light Direction, which is in the Color Range section. That has three different options which control the flow of light. Now when set to outward, which is the default, what happens is the light starts from the very center and flows outwards towards the edges. It's almost like a point light in the center that goes out into the edge and then stops. Now because the cylinder surrounds the center point, it can't be illuminated. However, if I move the cylinder to some point inside the volume that's not covering the center, you can see that as I move the cylinder downward, it starts getting light because the light flows from the center towards the edge and therefore the top is illuminated in this case. So let's try rendering that. There is one trick to using my 2012. Now even though I have my light correctly positioned to illuminate the top, it's not showing up. There's a bug that prevents it from working correctly sometimes. So what you can do is switch over to a different rendering engine just to test it out. I know it's there because I can see the alpha channel if I go to the alpha button, and there it is. However, it's not getting the light, at least from the renderer's point of view. So what I'm going to do is switch the rendering engine to Mental Ray. There's a drop down menu in the render view, and that determines what rendering engine you're using. Now it's set to Maya Software by default, which is great for most of your basic Maya operations, and it's the renderer that was developed for Maya itself. However, you can always switch over to a different rendering engine. As I mentioned, Mental Ray. Mental Ray is a very powerful renderer that's integrated in the Maya. Now, Mental Ray is available in other 3D packages as well. So, in any case, I'm going to switch over to Mental Ray to choose it as a rendering engine, Mental Ray. And then you can try to re render. Now, if you're missing the Mental Ray option in that drop down list, it's possible the plugin is turned off. There is a plugin that makes it work. If you go up to Window, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, Open that up. What you need to do is look for the Maya2MR.MLL plugin. So look for Maya2MR.MLL and click the Loaded and Auto Load checkbox and then hit Close. Now it'll load up the Mental Ray renderer if you don't see it. Occasionally it'll disappear. So right there you can turn it on. So in that case, I switched over to the Mental Ray so I can try to re render this. And there indeed is the top of the cylinder. I can also rotate the cylinder, just using the hotkeys there, and re-render, and whatever part of the cylinder is in between the center and the outer edge, in terms of light flowing in that direction, then it's going to be illuminated. Now it's a bit dim, so I'm going to increase intensity so we can see this a little bit easier. So there's a, a regular intensity slider for the light. I'll set that to 2. And there's the illuminated cylinder. All right, so that's the first direction, volume light direction set to outward. You also have the option of switching it to inward. Inward means that the light's flowing from the outer edge of the surface, or the outer edge of the shape, towards the center. So the light will only strike surfaces from that direction. Now in this case, the quick shade to use all light view is not going to be completely accurate, so I do have to render that to see the result. And in fact, this view of the cylinder, which is looking at the bottom, is illuminated because the light's going from the outer edge towards the center. And in fact, you'll see little arrows on the volume shape that indicate the flow of light. So quick shade version is not accurate. In this situation, the renderer is accurate. It's flowing from the outside inward. The third option for a volume light direction is down axis. That forces the light to go in one direction throughout the volume shape. 
as indicated by this arrow that originates from the center of the volume shape. So it acts like a directional light that's going down, but again, it's limited by the edge of the shape. In other words, any object outside that shape is not illuminated. So there's the down axis. It illuminates whatever is between the arrow and the edge. So the top of this cylinder here, or this side of the cylinder, which is facing upward, gets illuminated while the bottom does not. All right, so there are a few things to check when you use a volume light. One, you have to make sure your volume shape is large enough to encompass your objects, or that you've moved your objects inside the volume shape. The second is to check your volume light direction to make sure the light's flowing in a logical fashion based on where your objects are. And the third thing is, if you're having trouble having it render out with Maya software, switch over the mental ray. So now we've dealt with that, we can go on to a few of the other attributes. Now the volume lights have some of the common ones like color, intensity, illuminates by default. And this top section also has something called light shape. And light shape determines the shape of that outer shape. The default's a sphere, but you can switch it over to box, cylinder, or cone. And those function in the same way. The light's just limited to that volume. I'll switch it back to sphere for now. So you can choose your own shape. Now, even though the light has its own standard color attribute, it also has a color range section with a gradient. And what the gradient does is determines the quality of light as it goes from the outer edge to the center. So in other words, you can use this to tint or change the intensity of the light as it flows. So right now it's set to black on the left, white on the right. That means that from the outer edge, the light's dim and slowly gets more intense towards the center. You can move these sliders by click dragging them. So in this case, the light is much darker or off until it gets close towards the center and then it starts to become more and more intense. Aside from moving these sliders, you can also change the colors so you can tint the light. And that's combined with your standard color to the standard color attribute. So black and white sliders simply change the intensity, but you can change these colors to give it tint. So for instance, if I click the white handle, I get a color swatch for that under selected color and click that swatch, get the color chooser, pick some other color, click off of that. Now a gradient runs black to purplish. So now if I render this, you get a purplish color. Now I'm going to change the volume light direction. We're going to go back to inward, so it goes from the outer edge inward. Try it again. I'm going to move my cylinder up. So I'm getting purplish light flowing in the direction from the outer edge inward. Now if I go back and look at the attributes, it's going from black to purplish here. And the black simply means the light has no intensity, zero color. So to make that a little bit more exciting, I'm going to click that handle also and choose some totally different color, maybe yellow. Now the light's going to flow from yellow to purplish or pinkish. So in fact, you see here that the edge of the cylinder facing the outer edge, which is this bottom right here, is more the orangish color, while the part of the cylinder is close to the center, gets more of the pinkish color. The light is flowing from yellowish towards pinkish, yellowish on the outer edge, and that changes towards pinkish at the center. So based on where the cylinder is inside that shape, it's going to pick up different colors. So the cylinder is a little bit close to the outer edge. It gets more of the yellow color because of yellow. If I go back to my light, it's on the left side. Left side equates with the outer edge. The cylinder is close to the center. Like it is here. It's more of that pinkish color. So again, outer edge, center, and the light will change over that distance. Now you can have as many colors you want or keep them black and white. And also insert additional handles. If you click on the bar itself, you get a new handle and then you can choose a new color for that brand new handle. And then the light changes even more. Now the light's going to flow from yellow to cyan to pinkish purple. And that cylinder will reflect that based on where it's located inside that volume shape.
So there you can see that this end of the cylinder is close towards that mid-ground, which means it's cyan, yet this end is close to the center, which means it's that purplish pink. So that's a volume light. It's a bit esoteric, a bit tricky to use, but it can be useful. Now one advantage of having that volume shape is it limits where the light goes. So if you wanted to add an additional light to part of your scene where it only went a certain distance and stopped, it's the ideal light. In fact, this might be a good light to use for a fill light. Remember when we talked about three-point lighting, a fill light is the light that fills in the dark areas. So what you could do is take a volume light like this and place it someplace in the scene that's a little too dark and use it to light that little part of the scene, but be assured at the same time the light will not go past the volume edge.